Hi, um, I'm Devin Kimura and I'm with Art Beads and I'm here with Jeff Elvin, uh, owner of Dakota Stones. And our, we are taking this opportunity to um, just kind of chat about some of the stones that we're selling here on Art Beads. Um, I've got a tray of uh, star cut beads in front of me and star cut is one of our more popular um, cuts of, gem, of, the, of the gemstone beads, the semi-precious gemstone beads. Um, it's a beautiful cut. I don't know. I don't know much about them. So, Jeff, maybe you can tell me about about the cut and what makes it so popular. Things that you've learned over the years. Sure. Um, so, star cut. You can kind of see on the face of the bead that uh, how it's faceted and hand faceted makes a star when you see the bead flat. Um, we introduced these probably almost two years ago now. Uh, why I think they're interesting is round beads are so popular right now and this just mm -hmm. gives a nice aspect I like um, how flat how the light catches it because you mm -hmm. have this flatter surface so this just gives it that geometric pattern mm -hmm. and we carry it in a six millimeter and eight millimeter occasionally in ten mm -hmm. but uh, and these are probably some of our most popular stone types that are available in it yeah and they're beautiful and what I like about this star cut is that you know the, the reflection that you see coming off of the stone it's not like with with a with a round bead, it's going to be all kind of the same and you know symmetrical across your piece. But with the star cut, you get this kind of um, mix of reflections that gives it more of a um, I don't know what kind of a feel, but more of a no, I don't know. So it's, it's almost like a mirrored edge. So especially if yeah. you put it up against whatever bead it's against, it's going to pull off of that color. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a you know a different type of metal, right, it will have that mirrored finish that will kind of so you get a different aspect, especially in mm -hmm. some of the ones that are more opaque versus mm -hmm. translucent beads or multicolored. So the onyx is one of the really interesting ones mm -hmm. that has that really reflective mirror look. Yeah, that, the onyx is beautiful. And so, um, can you tell me a little bit about the onyx? I mean, it's just this amazing dark black and it's got a, a really great finish on it. Yeah, kind of, uh, well, I guess a little bit, I'm not gonna call it a dirty secret or just a secret of the gemstone mm -hmm. industry is most black onyx or almost all onyx, when you see it cut into a bead, cabochon or anything that's done for costume and DIY jewelry is heated agate. <laughs> and so what you're taking is banded agate and heating it to, uh, to an all black. Um, there are different degrees of that that happens and it is just basically that all natural black onyx is just not found that much in mm -hmm. nature and so right. you wouldn't have the supply and black is such a common used color mm -hmm. in fashion jewelry and others but the material that we particularly bite source is out of taiwan and the mm -hmm. reason we do that is they are kind of the masters at heating and irritating ir, irritating <laughs> ir, Irradi irradiating they're irradiating gemstones and mm -hmm. so they right. heat it multiple times mm -hmm. uh, upwards of five times because otherwise you can't see uh, quartzes or banding of oh, other see. pieces okay. of the agate that mm -hmm. don't turn all black okay and so and the black is fast I mean it's not going to change over time no it's heated all the way through if you broke mm -hmm. that so that's the the point of using uh, using multiple heatings to mm -hmm. make sure that it's going to penetrate all the way through the bead and mm -hmm. this it's done in the material form it's not done when it's in the bead so we're buying oh, actually okay. black material that's been heated all the way through and you're getting it mm -hmm. so right okay and how do you get such a fine polish on these beads tumble tumble and mm -hmm. so that that's kind of an actually this is especially with faceted stones it, it is truly an art when you talk mm -hmm. about tumbling a stone right because you're they're going to be doing this this would be not hand faceted this is going to be done somebody has invented a type of faceting machine that's mm -hmm. going to be done probably depending on the size and the stone type mm -hmm. you're going to get more more facets on a plate and kind right. of how they're doing it but then it goes into a tumbler which can be a mix of bamboo can mm -hmm. be a mix of uh, sand and no, oh, I see. Okay, but you're gonna want to put it into the tumbler, and you need a s certain specific number of beads. Often it's mm -hmm. two thousand beads to be in there, so you get the right weight and density. Oh, I see. Okay, and you have to match the right uh, stone types. If you have mm -hmm. something that's soft in there or something hard, mm -hmm. it will change the dimensions and the look of the softer stone. Mm -hmm. But the piece that you really need to realize, especially when you're working with faceting, going back to that, is it's literally like cooking something. And if you mm -hmm. leave it in there too long, all oh. the edges will fast and will basically right. tumble themselves yeah. off and you'll lose that crisp distinct. And so <laughs> what was probably the last step in designing gemstones or cutting and, and doing it is, is often the most important because mm -hmm. needing to make sure that you're doing 
the all it's, it's it's a science project to basically mm -hmm. make sure you're matching like stone types like hardness mm -hmm. and then the timing so you're not pulling them all out at the same time so. right yeah i mean there's a ton that goes into making a bead i mean, I mean literally a ton i mean i starts. mean how much i mean yeah. how, how much how you're, much stone do you need to you're during start the earth with? week you start off with i mean you <laughs> Each stone is going to be a little bit different, and mm -hmm. you probably get about a 20% to a 25% uh, mm -hmm. yield. Okay. And that's so meaning starting with 100% material, mm -hmm. you'd get the the bead would come out of it like about 25% of what you're we'd end up with as a good you know uh, mm -hmm. proper cutter and somebody mm -hmm. that knows what they're doing. Right, right. And if you were to if you if you were to string all the, the steps together, sorry, I'm just kind of throwing these questions out. How long yep. does it take to get from you know, a piece of rough, rough material that's delivered. This. Well, yeah, I think we've done one of those in the past where you'd start off by taking rough material, slabbing it okay. into whatever the thickness mm -hmm. of material, and then that would be slabbed into longer st strands or basically longer material pieces. Mm -hmm. okay. Then you cut those up. So that's what, step four, you count and I'll, I'll list it okay. as I know it to do it. Yeah. And then you take little cubes of beads, uh -huh. if you're making a round or this, and you right. put them in and and basically spin it in a centrifugal force machine and it's pounding off the edges of the blocks. Oh wow. The cubes okay. and so you'd kind of get a roundish looking mm -hmm. bead. Okay. And then you take that roundish looking bead and put it onto a plate mm -hmm. and then right. basically sand that down into a right. round and then you okay. take that into a faceting machine. Mm -hmm. Then you would <laughs> and I polish already it, I already lost count. drill it, string it, right, and then you sell it. Wow. Art beads. Yeah, that's huge. And on the faceting, though, you get I mean, the easy part. What, what, yeah. Let's list the number of things that are easy. It's receive. Uh, uh, yeah, because like, you know, I mean, this, I mean, certainly, I mean, they're not always cheap. But there's, a, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of labor and time that goes into into creating some of these strands, and they're fantastic. I mean, the the pieces that Cynthia's put together are beautiful, and and I've seen some really wonderful customer pieces as well. On the faceting side, I'm kind of curious. So that it goes into like a flat faceting. Table or a There's, wheel, and then, but it's got to be rotated, right? It is rotated. Yep. So is there just, is, uh, is that so that would mean? lock it down into. There's different ways. A lot of it will be hand faceted. So mm -hmm. they used to do it mostly on per bead, on okay. like a you glue wow. the bead on a stick and then touch that each time. Jeez. So they have some of the automation. Um, this automation is secret, proprietary. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Um, some of the newer micro facets is also proprietary, mm -hmm. so they're build they are building ways, but you it, it isn't a machine like where they're making a round. It's mm -hmm. on a plate and it's rotating, so mm -hmm. yeah. you'd obviously need to be able to lock the bead down mm -hmm. and do it. So fantastic! All right, well, thanks for a little bit of explanation on the star cut bead. I think it's a really great cut that um, I think you know if you if you see it in person, you're going to love it. Yeah, I think it's just wonderful. So thanks, Jeff, for of course for helping us through that. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.